That song, let me take this one quickly. Call it, kick it quick. Checking in, what's that? Oh, checking in. That's what I hadn't done no check ins in a while. If y'all want to call in and check in, matter of fact, let me give you some Legion to check in on. Then I'm going to close <laughs> out with Uchi Khan. You, bro, got folks checking in. Thank you, man. Okay, bro. Caller, are you checking in? Are you there? Give you a little raise the black man to check in on if you want to check in. You got to listen to the telephone. You might have seen this dissipate off cable. So, in my lifetime, past, past the present. present. To Born, Born in the situation. In this nation, black man. Caller, are you checking in? Black man, I want. You checking in? I wanted in? to talk to you, but I ain't really get a chance to earlier. You cut me off because I called dude to you. <laughs> but um, I, man, I had some really that was really in Detroit, but outside of Detroit. But nowadays, it's coming more of a part of Detroit today because there's more artists from here that's getting into the mainstream. You know, such as uh. Big Sean and other artists like that who are from Detroit. But um, but um, a lot of these guys out here, they talk about and have been accused of being like a part of the Masons or Illuminati or something like. Do you believe these guys are just fronting for the same? Or I mean, do you? Well, your opinion. You know, I want to know your opinion. Do you really think it's that deep? Well, talk about the music? Illuminati stuff. I've done shows on the Illuminati, the Boule. Uh, the the Jack and Jill. I've done a lot, a lot of those shows over the last 17 years, bro. But this is the thing. I've never heard of a secret society that everybody knows about. So it ain't necessarily so secret no more. <laughs> so that means ain't no power no more. Right. All right, my brother. Thank you. Appreciate that. Call it you on the air. Kick it quick. Yo, check it down live and in color, old brother. It must be us. Thank you, bro. One. Call it you checking in. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How you doing? I'm fine. Can you play some great music as you're going out? I am playing great music. You don't like Legion? I, I like when you put on the awesome 80s. Well, I, ain't so going I, can... in, I ain't going 80s, and I'm going to leave out with a little bit of Uchi Khan tonight. <laughs> Cause I, if for no other reason, just so I can say his name, it's so smooth, Uchi Khan. <laughs> say it again. Anyway, you nah, know, Uchi Khan, you get to doing some strange stuff over there. All right, thank you, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Call her. <laughs> Are you checking in? Checking in, Hojo James on the east side. James, checking in. Thank you, James. Peace, bro. Call her. You checking in? Hey, boo. This needs you checking in. Hey, boo. <laughs> Carly, you checking in? <laughs> Are you there? You checking in? Carly, it is you. What you going to do? It's Adelia checking in. Hey, Adelia. You hadn't heard from you in a while, sis. How you yes. doing? Yes, it's a beautiful show. I, I appreciate the uh, Moore brother coming on and giving us some energy. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And for those of you who I told y'all earlier that y'all are the stars, if y'all read right there, it says starring the community. I didn't lie. I couldn't type that fast when y'all was watching. <laughs> Carla, you checking in? Yeah, great show. Checking in. Hey, thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Carla, you checking in? Diddy, checking in from the east side. Thank you, east side. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, thanks, Hodo. All right. Matter of fact, I'm working on, um, I think Christmas Day is a Sunday this year, so I expect to be on the air. So I don't know about what's going on with other folks, but I expect to come on live. And um, it's going to be an entertaining evening, boy. I'm going to bring y'all some real good entertainment. I'm not going to tell you who exactly yet because I hadn't got a total confirmation. But uh, if I get who I really want, this sister was bad. And I call her the songstress if you go on my Facebook page. You better see who the songstress is. But um, anyway, that's who I've tried to acquire. Caller, are you checking in? Speak to Hodo, please. You're speaking to Hodo. Hello? You're on the air, bruh. Hello? It is you. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Hodo? Yes, sir. You're on the air. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This is um, Mr. Mubarak Hakeem, the father of uh, Ariana. Oh, bro, You got waited Baldo so late. We're not on cable. Marianne got Baldo case. Yes, sir. Hold on. Now, bro, you waited a half hour late. We ain't even on cable no more. Okay, well. But we're going to do this. We live on the air. But you waited a half hour too late, man. 
we wanted to get you on cable so it had more effect. Okay. But we do have people out here who are watching on the uh, internet. I just ran my credits. So I was getting ready to get off the air, but we're going to go and take this call. This is uh, Marianne Gabaldo's husband or ex husband. And what's going on with her case tomorrow? Okay, we're scheduled in the morning at 9 o'clock to be at Judge Gregory Bill's courtroom. And that is Monday, is, uh, Frank Monday Murphy's the 12th. Hall of Justice, courtroom 701, for a Judge Bill to render the, a decision in regard to about either the case, the criminal case that was thrown out by Judge Ronald Giles to be, mm. um, to be submitted back in to go into a jury or to be thrown out. Okay. Now, what happened during Friday when you, when uh, Marianne had to go before the judge? Okay, Gregory Bills, uh, the prosecution is trying to um, reopen the case in regards to about allegedly about the, the gun and uh, saying that even though that this, there were discrepancies in the paperwork, which was invalid, the invalid paperwork that was unconstitutional in violation of uh, Marianne's Fourth Amendment rights, even though all of that, um, various parts of it, is uh, out of order, uh -huh. they still feel that Marianne was in violation in terms of dealing, putting, taking the laws or matters into her own hands, which Byron... Um, Pitt, uh, one of our lawyers, he automatically showed in the in the case Friday uh -huh. about that there was allegedly there was no gunshot, there was no proof of any gunshot, any proof of any gun residue. So there was fragment, no forensic during during the, the forensic test of for the, the residue. Judge, none of that showed up on her hands. Thirty six huh? district court, some time back. And so now they're trying to reopen the case back up again. But it's interesting to note, brother, is that what has happened, that uh, at the case Friday, when it was um, a slight recess before the case started back, Judge Gregory Bills of the uh, Frank Murphy Hall of Justice received a phone call from Judges Lynn Pierce's uh, office. Now, who is she? What does she have to do with this? Lynn Pierce has anything to do with Lynn Pierce's uh, family court. She deals with the uh, juvenile court. She's dealing with our case with our daughter. Okay. Okay, which is scheduled also to be. Uh, we are scheduled to be in her courtroom at one thirty tomorrow. Okay. So, therefore. Tomorrow, after Judge Bills renders a decision whether to uh, open the case back up, the criminal case back up, or throw it out, we still have to be at her courtroom, coincidentally, tomorrow at 1.30 to finish out some different things about our daughter's educational program as well as uh, her uh, medical program. Now, what about the, the molestation of your child? Would that be brought up as well? Would they be putting themselves in check? for taking your child illegally and putting her in harm's way when she was not in harm's way? Will, will, will your attorney be addressing that in both of these court cases? They're supposed to be addressed, but they tried to throw it out uh, at the uh, custody case, the first case, due to, due to the fact because they're trying to say that nothing of the sort ever happened Hold up, hold up, hold up. Didn't you? Didn't the doctor say it happened? Or did your child they say found it happened? Out that my daughter was positive of chlamydia. <sighs> okay, this is why she was taken from Hawthorne Medical Center and taken that day when they she had a urine test, and the doctor found out that she was positive of chlamydia, and she was taken to the Children's Hospital for an examination. And she was kept there, and the examination came back a few weeks later. And a couple days, they're trying to say that it came, it came negative. Mm. It didn't come positive, which it did come positive. So we all now, into now the how, fight. How, how do they, 
how do they change the doctor's report from one thing to another one, man? Well, it's, it's the same thing as as they saying that they threw a, the, the uh, criminal case out from Judge Ron, the Ronald Giles from 36 District Court, and he threw it out on the basis of a lot of invalid information that was unconstitutional in violation of Marion's constitutional rights. Now they're trying to bring it back up. Okay, tomorrow they will render a decision from uh, Judge Bills to find out whether if the case will be opened up or not. It's a cover-up of major proportion. It's a conspiracy. And everybody in the city of Detroit and throughout the state of Michigan knows that the case was thrown out and they're trying to reopen the case. Judge Pierce calls Gregory Bills' courtroom, what is allegedly his, uh, his staff call. It doesn't make any difference whether she called or the staff called. She has no business calling him and dealing with this case. So that means judges are not supposed to have conferences about the cases, huh? Exactly. And so, exactly. so basically, the case, is that, the is that, is that grounds for a mistrial? Well, hopefully so. Gregory, uh, Gregory Beatles came out after the courtroom, after the, the, after the recess, and let everyone in the courtroom know that he received a call from Lynn Pierce's office. Okay. Okay. So he may very well have just given you a gift. Exactly, to cover himself. Well, also. not necessarily to cover himself. It may very well have been to help you out without volu- uh, literally saying, here, here, I'm helping you. Never can yeah. tell. As, as the old saying says, don't look a gift horse in the mouth now. True. We will, um, we will find out just how honest and sincere that uh, Mr. Judge Bill is. Okay. By the mob, because he wanted to wait for the whole weekend he had a chance to, he said he's read the transcript for both sides thoroughly okay. at the beginning of the, uh, uh, at the beginning of the court. Well, uh, I think, case. bro, I'm going to be truthful with you. Just my personal uh, uh-huh. analysis on what, what you just said, and that is that possibly this brother or whoever the judge is, he just gave you an opportunity for your lawyer to get on top of the game and be able to file the appropriate documents to for a mistrial since he admitted that a judge contacted him while both cases are still pending. I'm not no lawyer or nothing, but common exactly. sense is common sense, bro. Exactly. Y'all better make sure I that agree. y'all lawyer on top of his game. I agree. But we'll see what happens tomorrow. Okay. You know, uh, of course you're dealing, with, you're dealing with lawyers, you're dealing with people that are supposed to be professional, highly qualified, um, uh, supposed to know what to do and when to do it. And we know this. Okay. And we're going to protest in regards to about this. But what we want the people to know is that we would like them to uh, show up, come in solidarity with us, mobilize with us, come together with us tomorrow at 9 o'clock, Frank Murphy Hall of Justice, 1441 St. Antoine at Gratiot, courtroom 701, Judge Gregory Bill, okay. courtroom to the, let the people know uh, that we need you there on hand as well as uh, at one thirty tomorrow at uh, Juvenile Court at Glenn Ch- Judge Glenn Pierce's um, courtroom. Okay. Okay, at one thirty to deal with our, our daughter's custody case, and then in the, in the morning we're dealing with the criminal case with the mother. Oh. And it's just, like I said, it's, it's coincidental, and it's such a convenience for them that all of a sudden he decides that he wants to wait till Monday to to go over the case, uh, go over the law, think about it until Monday, and just so happens our other case is Monday at 1.30, and his case is at 9 o'clock. 